need a bunch of country girls from where they said lean So pom pom to the drums for the winning team Titty me, pretty freak, turn up on the scene You need to get those drugs out on my big screen You need to get those drugs out on my big screen Yeah, he needs to get his wands up to say that he's seen them You need a one-on-one with me on the big screen Yeah, to see you and interview you for the big screen Outside this profession would find art Sent an email of a naked in a state ID Cards to contract independently and whatever I want Said don't judge her, it's another way to take care of a son I commended her, then began editing, get so much fun I need a bunch of country girls from where they said lean To pom pom to the drums for the winning team Titty me, pretty freak, turn up on the scene You need to get those drugs out on my big screen Okay, before we get into this water element video, I do want to say that Gina Stewart's digital calendar is now available for download. Click on the link, it'll take you to a site, to our blog, to where you can go to her store and get it now. There is also photo sets available now that she's doing, as well as videos. And what is the occult without having some mystery photos that are also provided every week? Going to see what day it is has never been as great as it is now. Get this calendar, I'm telling you. So now that that's taken care of, let's get into this video. All right. What's up, y'all? There's rules to this water thing. So what I mean by that is I'm about to speak about the element of astrology, right? The element of water. Water signs are Scorpio, Cancer, and Pisces. And um, it's predominantly going to be um, focused on Scorpio, but I'm going to touch on the other signs a bit, too, just to be more descriptive. Um, so with the whole water thing, right, this is how it goes. Like Scorpio is like, all right, Pisces is like the depths of the ocean. I've, 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 I've explained this like this before. In a video, someone actually asked me to look at a video of another astrologer and their breakdown of the water signs, and I told them that it was pretty accurate, you know, um, because sometimes people misinterpret us. We are of the same element, however, we're different. And so, as I was saying before, Pisces is like the depths of the ocean. Like, Pisces is like, oh, um, you want to get to know me? Okay, are you ready to go? Like, ready for me to grab you and take you to the bottom of the ocean you know what i'm saying something that haven't ever been explored before because our sign is heavily emphasized around the unknown of what is not known what needs to be discovered or what should be discovered which is a 12th house it's about unknown secrets and then once found confidential information and behind behind the scene events right so now with that being said, it's very dark at the bottom of the ocean, and a lot of people have not met, been able to reach there. Well, no one's been able to reach there from what we know of, right? It's something that is, again, not yet explored. Yet people are exploring the stars since we can, since the recording of time, right? So that's how you look at Pisces. Um, just that dark. Now, Cancer is the active flow of the water, all right? So cancer is actually water being active. It's the action of it. So when you see waves rocking back and forth, when you see, um, you know, waves coming where they surf at, when you see crashing tides coming in, when you see hurricanes and stuff spinning off of the water, off the ocean, that's cancer, all right? Because it's unpredictable in its emotions, right? It gets pulled by its emotions. So I can't say really unpredictable because if you track the moon, you can understand how um, the cancer behaves. 
Um, but at the same time, they're not fixed in their emotions is pretty much what I'm saying. They are easily pulled by the moon so they can be like this one minute, the next day they're like this. All right. And um, so that's why out of all of the water signs, cancer is more OK with public attention or being in a public light, even being in a public forum and such as politics and stuff like that. Cancer is more comfortable than a Scorpio or a Pisces is um, because they come with the drama. Right. If, if you know any cancers. And this is not a shot cancer. It's just it just is what it is. If you know any cancers, though, like they won't even pop up until there's like something dramatic to talk about. That's why they do well in like comedy and and, you know, even on on the screen is because they need some drama to talk about. They need to get themselves involved in some type of drama because of the attention that comes with it. You know, they may not tell you this. I'll probably <laughs> I'm going to mention that in my cancer woman video. So I'm just preparing you now for it anyway. Um but that's that's how it goes. Now, Scorpio. Scorpio is um, Scorpio is deep, right? But Scorpio is more like still waters. So sometimes people say Scorpio is deep, 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 deep. Not as deep as you would think. Not as deep as the Pisces. And this is not a comparing, but this is a comparison. All right. And. So because you got to look at Scorpio as more like still waters, still waters. And I don't know. I, I think it's equally as possibly terrifying as the bottom of the ocean, because you ever like if you watch horror films and stuff like that, if you ever see a camera like pan across a lake or a stream that is still there's something very eerie about that. Something very eerie because you can hear everything. You don't hear water crashing. You don't hear water moving. You don't hear anything. You can hear everything else except the water. You understand what I'm talking about? And that's how Scorpio is because it's like you can feel a Scorpio looking at you from across the room when you're not even looking at them, depending on how sharp your intuition is. Right? Um... They will be figuring you out even when you're unsuspecting of it. You may not even know that you're being looked at by Scorpio energy. And when you think about it, right, if you look at it in depth, still waters reflect your face. It's like a mirror. So when you hear that water signs mirror people's feelings onto them, it's very true. Um. So Scorpio, right, deals with personal power. So to see your reflection as clear as can be, it takes still waters. You're not going to be able to really see it through all of the waves crashing and the pulling from the moon and the tornadoes and stuff. You can't really see a person for who they are like with that, right? And you can't really see a person if you go way down to the bottom of the ocean. There's not even enough tools able to do so. Right. However, when you're up on that surface, on that earth, Scorpio is the most surface of the water signs. So when you're up on that earth and you're forced to face reality, you're forced to face. Um, yeah, we're going to call it reality for now. Right. When you're forced to face it, you're forced to look at yourself. So this is where like the term no excuses comes from. This is what Scorpio believes like that's part of their belief system is. That's you right there. So whatever's underneath that, they have a pretty good idea what's underneath that as well. And they know better than most people that your your game face or what you're showing is not all the time true. So they can look into you and say, oh, there's more to this person. It's just not the way that they project themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you throw a pebble inside of a river... Not a river, excuse me. If you throw a lever inside of a pond, that's a, that's like a still body of water, right? A pond. If you throw a pebble inside of a pond, you're going to see what? You're going to see the ripple, a small ripple of waves. And that same ripple looks like what? The Wi-Fi sign, right? And the reason I bring that up is because the sky, the water also reflects the sky, right? It's a reflection, right? So, and this is why 
if you think about spiritual warfare, if you believe in any of that type of stuff, or if you hear about that type of stuff, you may want to pay attention to what I'm saying because it's probably war against the elements more than you think it is. There can be peace amongst the elements. However, if you look at the elemental qualities of each element, you can see why this would be so, right? Because you got, let's say, sun signs, right? Fire signs, excuse me. If the sun burns to a certain degree, what happens? The water, the ice melts, the water, the sea levels rise, causes floods, right? Floods the earth. So now you got a war going on between the fire signs, the water signs, and the earth signs, right? Same thing is potentially possible with the air signs too. Don't sleep. And the reason I say that is because think about Wi-Fi. Let's talk about Wi-Fi. And um, as a matter of fact, Moon is in Scorpio right now, right? So check this out. Scorpios don't really like when you know what they know. It's not they're not big on that. So they'll figure some stuff out because that's what they do, and they'll keep it to themselves. And they'll utilize it as power. They'll harness it, right? So it's just like I gave that description about the pebble being thrown into the um, into the pond. It causes a ripple and then it causes the face, the reflection of oneself to change, right? Scorpio doesn't really favor that either because they are fixed energy. So if they feel if you think you know something about them, they're safe with that. They're cool with that because they know that there's more beneath them that you have no idea about. And if you ask them about it, they might give you a a four word sentence in reply and then it, what happens is it makes you speak even more see I'm dropping real gems right now um, <laughs> please believe so the reason why I say that I say that to say this is that once you throw once it makes that ripple and it distorts the reflection then it gives chance for mutable qualities to entertain whatever it is um, that is other than what they're fixated on Right. So an example of that, and remember I said it's symbolic to Wi-Fi, that ripple. If you ever experience your Internet connection um, going awry at a time where you really want it to go, you know how you like click on something. You're like, why is it moving so slow? Like the Internet be, may be moving slower than it usually does. And you're, you're pissed off about it. Right. Or, you know, some, somebody may hack your account. Something like that. Scorpios are good hackers, too. Um, but here nor there. I digress. When something like that occurs, you get irritated. Why? Because you're fixated on going to that website. You're fixated on seeing this particular video. You're fixated on speaking to this particular person. Right? So whenever that's disrupted, a distortion comes. It get, get one very angry. And if you do it well, I'm trying to tell you, if it's done while the moon is in Scorpio, you might find yourself outraged. Outraged. And beneath the scenes, this is how Scorpio operates. Right? Now, this, I, I see that the moons, the Scorpio moons have it more under control. This awareness about themselves. They embrace it. They may even talk to you about it. Scorpio suns, on the other hand... They mask this until, like, they can probably go under a waterboard, um, figuratively speaking, before they even admit this, before they actually admit it and embrace it and talk to you about it, admit it in front of you. They have a tougher time of doing so. However, they all have these emotions bottled up inside with a very stoic external demeanor, which throws you off. Right. They are intense as their face looks. However, it's it's a shell. It's hiding all of their insecurities and bottled up emotions that's sitting right there at the pit of their stomach, just ready. And that kind of like terrifies them as well. Same thing with um with Pisces cancer, though, it's like they'll they'll black out quickly and just be like, you know, OK, well, you didn't notice that I was supposed to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't see how I was provoked or, you know, cancer is great at being destructive and, like, playing the victim in the same time, the same time. Right? So let's get back to the air signs and how they can create war amongst the elements. Utilizing Wi-Fi, right? You know, technology is cool. 
I get that. But what some people may not understand is, some people, so others get this, is that we had Wi-Fi before the actual physical, tangible Wi-Fi was made something that was tangible and expressive in the form that it's in now. And that comes from hive mind and, you know, synchronicity and um, intuition um, and paranormal activities. You know, so, okay, you hear about these things in books, you see these things in the movies, you may hear a YouTube video here and there, see a YouTube video here and there. And this is up to, this is modern times, right? You didn't see these things on TV like that before. You might see a polka dice movie here and there, touch on it a little bit. No one ever spoke about these things. Trust me, though, they were occurring. They were happening. This is not something that is new. Okay? So what I mean by that is like this. There is a such thing as tele um there is a such thing as telepathy, okay? You can read a person's mind. You can contact other people without a cell phone. You can do it. I'm not going to go into details on how that's done and all of that stuff. I'm just telling you that that's the first form of Wi-Fi. So if you look at Wi-Fi now, it's pretty much just pulling energy out of the air and trans you know, transporting it to other people. They made it tangible, though. You know what I mean? It's been made tangible now. So now you, if you're not aware of what I'm talking about, you believe that this power is truly in this device, that it's truly because of the satellites. And, uh, you know, and if so, all right, granted. You know what I mean? Because, again, some people don't operate on the same frequency as others, and I get that. Totally understandable. However, again, I'm telling you, these capabilities been around. They've been around. We've been pulling energy out of the air and, like, transporting it to each other. Some of us. Some people. All right? So now that it's made tangible and you put your belief into the device or whatever the case may be, what can happen here is you stop practicing. You stop building yourself up to be that intuitive soul that you naturally are. You rely more on the device now. And don't get me wrong, these devices, what they do is they heighten, they amplify the ability to be telepathic. So for those people who were not able to be telepathic before technology exploded on a scene like this, now you have a higher tendency to become psychic. So for me, from what I read and what I study at least, I haven't, you know, I haven't ran into everyone that I met that's psychic. Um, but from what I studied, like everybody has a bit of psychic ability inside of them. To what extent they're willing to open up and operate that is totally different. And some people need to work on it. It's a practice. It's a skill. Right. And I think it has more to do with the size of population, which actually dilutes the capability, the capability, excuse me. Um, but this is how the air signs can go to war against um, not only the water signs because spirituality to, to be able to do a practice like tele telepathy and psychic ability that's spirituality that comes from the water alright and so this is an attack on water on the water element from the air element this is also a, an attack on the earth element as well because if you look at the Taurus construct Taurus deals with the five senses is really the, the the human body right um so well the physical plane is pretty much what I mean to say and and the reason why I say that is because when you dilute the human anatomy to the point where it's relying and depending on things that are external of it it kind of dilutes the power of the human anatomy now that's dependent on your perception as well because you can see how technology does assist humankind, makes things much simpler by the touch of a button and you know storage data and things of that nature. It's like pulling your brain inside of a Google Drive and it's like, oh, there goes my brain. You go look into your brain or whatever, right? Kind of an analogy there. So, you know, but again, if Let's say, and this is just an example, I'm not saying that this is going to occur. I'm just saying, um, 
if there was, you know, because people keep doing this fear mongering thing I've been seeing about EMP attacks and stuff like that. And I don't favor any of that stuff. Like, I don't, I don't favor fear mongering in like real, if you're going to do a movie or something like that, I, I think that's pretty cool. All right. You could put a perception out there. Fine. I know you did it for entertainment purposes, but to be really, um, focused on like pushing this agenda that all of these terrible things are going to happen and this is like your job like i don't i don't favor that um however i'm going to use this heavily used example for my example and saying well, okay what if it did happen i sound like i'm contradicting myself now right but i need to make my point and if it did occur then people would have to rely on themselves again and if something needed to be immediately done then you may suffer from that consequence. It may be a consequence of that actual thing happening. So it's like, remember, we used to remember phone numbers by heart. You get, a, you go to a girl, you say, hey, what's up? You know, you, you do your spill and, you know, you get the number. You remember it by heart. You know what I mean? Because you, you'd go to a pay phone. Nobody really, like, I don't know, people from my era, we didn't really like carrying phone books. We didn't really like to do that. So what we would do is we would remember... I would phone numbers by heart. You know, I remember my my mom's phone number right now. I remember a few of my homeboys' numbers when we grew up still to this day. You know what I'm saying? Um, but now, you get so many phone numbers and you're like, yeah, send me your number, send me your number. You log it, you file it, and you're just like, yeah, okay. You know, you just look for the profile pic and you click on it and then it starts dialing, right? It's beautiful, however, at the same time. What if something happened and you needed to call someone and you just did not know their number and you had their number and for whatever reason your phone doesn't turn on or you understand what I'm talking about so that's how it could be an attack but it can also be a beautiful thing it depends though on how another thing it depends on is how it's implemented on earth so it could be a luxury for the earth element because of how they monetize technology right say oh yeah this stuff everyone's going to need it it makes the quality of life better which it does that's what i'm saying it's a it's a give and take thing here right however what if there are a group of people or there are people who just find it not worth it right just find it not worth it like oh okay if i need to talk to somebody i go talk to the people who live next door to me or i'll talk to the people who live in my household i don't care about people all the way on the other side of the world or who lives down the block or who's in Hollywood or I don't I don't care. You know what I'm saying? So they may dilute the value of the air element. Say that it's not worth it. You know, and they can you know, if this if this is the attitude, you know, it's pretty much not. It's the contrary, right? It's quite the contrary because if you look at the statistics of how technology is growing, has grown and is still growing and pervading, you'd say well, they stand no chance if they wanted to create a wave of people who said, oh, we're just going to leave all of that technology stuff alone. Give me a cabin in the woods. I want to chop some trees down, make my own fire and stuff like that and live off of the grid, you know. Um, but it's still a, it's still doable, you know. And these are the type of people who would, if they were to do the whole cabin in the woods thing, like concretely off the grid, then these would be the earth element that feels that they are being attacked by the air element. You understand what I'm talking about? And even more, if it's a, um, even if it's a financial thing, so be it. You know, then that means that these particular earthlings feel that it's not worth, economic-wise, it's not worth it. And with being that, with them retreating or whatever the case may be, I'm pretty sure that they would develop skills that, again, would give them insight, intuition, sharper psychic abilities and telepathic abilities. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say right now. I might be back with a extensive view on this. I'm out.